Hello everyone, welcome. We have finally reached the end of the year, which means it's time to talk about every single book I read in 2023. Last year I made a version of this video where I think I did like a one sentence review for every book I read, but this time around I think I'm just gonna go through every single book and we're gonna talk about them a little bit, some of them far less than others, some of them far more than others, but we're gonna go through my star rating and just my general overall thoughts on them. I already did a video going through my top 10 favorites of the year, so if you want to know my absolute favorites you can check that video out, but today we're just gonna be talking about every single book I read, all 65 of them, so that you can get a comprehensive list of all of my reading for the year. Quickly before we get into the rest of the video, I want to let you all know about the sponsor for today's video, which is Mondly. Mondly is an app that helps you learn new languages. They rank among the top five language learning apps globally, and they officially launched in 2014 and quickly became one of the most popular education apps worldwide. They offer access to 41 different languages, including 33 native languages, and they include daily, weekly, and monthly quizzes to help you learn as easily, accessibly, and quickly as possible. They also have hands-free learning so that you can multitask while doing your language sessions. I'm super excited about using Monly because they offer Farsi as one of their languages. And as many of you know, I already speak Farsi, but I never learned how to read or write in Farsi, and I would love to be able to do that. And they don't offer that language on many apps, but Monly does. And I'm so incredibly happy about that because it's something I've always wanted to do. The app is super easy to use and whether you are a beginner or intermediate or more advanced speaker of the language, they have options for everybody. So with the start of the new year, if you've been trying to figure out what your new year's resolutions are going to be, learning a new language I think is always a fantastic one and you can easily do that with Mondly. That's definitely going to be one of my new year's resolutions for this year to brush up on my Farsi and try and improve it as much as I can and officially learn how to read and write. So if you're interested in trying out Mondly for yourself, you can go to my link mondly.app slash clockwork reader for a huge discount on their lifetime option so that you can start learning a new language today. A huge thank you again to Mondly for sponsoring today's video and without any further ado let's get back into the books. I also did want to mention before we get into the full list of books there are going to be a couple of books that I'm not going to be mentioning on this list specifically not because I didn't love them not because I don't think they're good but because there is currently a boycott on SMP St. Martin's Press the publisher for some of these books and in uh, solidarity with that boycott I'm not going to be talking about the books. So if you are wondering why a couple of pretty popular books that I've mentioned many times in other videos that I really loved um, and that you know that I've read, if you notice that they're not in this video, that is why. So I just wanted to mention that in the beginning just so you're all aware. But apart from that, I'm talking about every other book I have read this year. I read a really good variety of stuff this year and a lot of books that I really, really loved. Honestly, most of the books I read this year, I genuinely enjoyed them. But this year, I really feel like most of what I read were either new favorites or just genuinely enjoyable books. There weren't too many misses, which was really nice. I mean, out of 65, there were still definitely some that I didn't absolutely adore, but there was still a good amount of four and five star reads. So yeah, overall a really good reading year for me and I'm very happy with most of what I read. And I'm really excited to talk about all of them. So without any further ado, let's get into my 2023 reading wrap up. Is that what we're gonna call it? I guess that's what we're calling it. My 2023 reading wrapped. We'll just go with that. <laughs> so the first book that I read this year was The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa. This was a really short fiction book that was essentially, as the title suggests, about this housekeeper and the professor that she works for. And the professor is losing his memory. So every single day when she comes back to his house, he doesn't remember what happened the previous day. So he doesn't really remember her a lot of the time. And it's about her relationship with him as well as her son's relationship with him. I was really looking forward to reading this book and I really thought I was gonna enjoy it. But unfortunately, it was kind of a letdown for me. I understand why some people might like it. It's just not the type of thing that I'm really into. I was waiting for the book to give you that really emotional punch to feel that like gut-wrenching like heartfelt emotion from the story but I never really got that from it. So ultimately this one was a bit underwhelming and I ended up giving it about three stars. The next book I read in 2023 was Idol Burning. Essentially this book follows the story of this girl who is a huge J-pop fan. She's a really big fan of this one specific idol and it basically follows her and her fascination and obsession with this idol specifically as he's going through a scandal and she is kind of trying to defend his actions and it's about fan culture, stan culture specifically, fandoms in general, and power and influence and the influence of social media and just a lot of subjects I find really interesting and fascinating as somebody who is involved in a lot of them. And I really enjoyed this book. I thought that the critique was well done and the story was a bit slow paced. It was a much quieter story in a lot of ways and very introspective which 
which is the type of thing I really like. So I ended up really liking this and I gave this four out of five stars. All right, the next two books that I read were Once Upon a Broken Heart and The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. These are the first two books in this series. The third one is out now, but I still haven't read it, even though I plan to read it this year. But I did read the first two books in this series this year and I really, really enjoyed these. This is a YA fantasy series that I think is perfect for anybody who loves fairy tales, fairy tale retellings. Stephanie Garber writes romance and builds worlds really, really well. They're extremely immersive and these were books that I read at a time where I just really wanted to escape into a fantasy world and that's exactly what I got. They're the perfect type of immersive escapist fantasy and I loved everything about reading them. I ended up giving these both four out of five stars and I'm really excited to finally read the last book, hopefully early next year. The next two books on my list are by an author that I first started reading this year and I've loved everything I've read by her um, and those are A River Enchanted and A Fire Endless by Rebecca Ross. I absolutely adored this series. This is a fantasy series based on Scottish folklore and mythology and it's so good. The vibes in this are immaculate. Another series that I feel like is perfect escapist fantasy when you just really want to be immersed in a different world. I also feel like these books are a bit more quiet and slow paced, which is the type of fantasy I also really like a lot of the time. I don't know that you necessarily call them cozy fantasy. I don't really know what defines that genre, but I don't really know what the specific qualifications of cozy fantasy would be. But these books do feel pretty cozy to me. She has beautiful lyrical prose and fantastic lovable characters and just amazing romance. So these were all around so much fun to read and I plan to read much more of her work in the future. And I gave both of these, I believe, four out of five stars. All right, so the next book that I read was Spare by Prince Harry. Oh, look at that. It's detecting his face because it's so prominent on here. It's literally the size of my own head. I talked about this in one of my reading wrap-ups earlier this year, so I won't talk about it too much here, but I have, I feel like, mixed feelings about this book that are kind of different from the general popular reaction that I'd been seeing to this book. I don't know how people feel about it now, but when it first came out, there was like a lot of hate towards this book. Some of it for very valid reasons, but some of it for honestly just misogynistic reasons. And I mentioned it in that video as well. I genuinely think there are parts of this book that are really well done. His ghostwriter is a really good writer. And some of those sections I feel like really delve well into trauma and grief and exploring those things and exploring masculinity in a lot of ways, which I think is something rare to see from such a prominent figure like this and I think that's honestly a really powerful message to get across. But there are also other sections of this book which are extremely long and completely unnecessary that are just plain military propaganda that are horrible and you don't need those sections of the book at all to get anything out of this. So I really didn't give this a rating because I don't really know how to feel about it. I honestly read it just because it was such a big moment and such a big release and I was just so curious to know how they were going to approach something like this. So yeah that's why I decided to read it but yeah I liked certain things about it a lot and I think it poses a good starting point for some conversations but then other sections of it are just not it. So yeah, anyways, I did read Spare this year. This feels honestly like I read it so long ago, it doesn't feel like I read it this year at all. There's like a specific divide in this year for me, which feels like the before and the after. Like parts of what I read and experienced this year don't even feel like they happened to me within a year. They feel like they happened like three years ago. And this book, reading this, that feels like a different time. It's been so long, I have very little memory left of it. Moving along, the next book that I read was Midnight in Everwood. I read this in January, I think, because it had a very like wintry theme and it felt appropriate for the season. This is basically like a YA fantasy nutcracker retelling and I really enjoyed this. Like this wasn't amazing or mind-blowing in any kind of way. It was just a fun simple read and it was a good time for me and what I was looking for at the time but it's not something I think I'm gonna remember in the long run. I barely remember what happens to be honest with you but if you're looking for a good fun wintry read this is something that I could definitely recommend and I ended up giving this 3.75 to 4 out of 5 stars. Okay so so the next book that I read was none other than Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. This is what I'm talking about. Like this feels like I read this two years ago. Can you believe that I read this in 2023? Like this came out this year. I made the video about it this year, but this feels like a lifetime ago. <laughs> this was probably my most disappointing read of the year, which is so heartbreaking to say because I still liked it. I just wanted to love it. I wanted to be utterly obsessed with it and for this to cement the Last Hour series as one of my favorite series of all time, but it unfortunately did not do that and I'm still a little bit heartbroken over it. I went to the book signing for this book earlier this year and it was a lot of fun, got to meet lots of you and got to hang out with friends and I had a great time reading it. I filmed a whole reading vlog of it and everything but unfortunately the actual plot, the actual story was a little bit of a letdown. I loved some aspects of it, didn't love others 
And yeah, I'm just, I'm still, still sad. And I think I will remain sad for a little while. <laughs> so I ended up giving this a three out of five stars. The next book that I read was The Beautiful Ones by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. This is a historical romance novel with a little bit of magic mixed in there. I really ended up enjoying this mostly because I loved the writing. The prose was beautiful in this book and it really makes me want to read Mexican Gothic, um, the author's other book, because I feel like I'll really, really love that one. But yeah, as far as historical romance goes, I thoroughly enjoyed my experience of reading this. I would definitely recommend it if that's something that you're into, especially if you like a little bit of fantasy. So I ended up giving this book four out of five stars. Next, I picked up Beach Read by Emily Henry. Beach Read is definitely my second favorite of Emily Henry's work. I really, really liked this story a lot more than I thought I would. I didn't think that I was going to love it the way a lot of people did, but something about it really captivated me. I think it's the emotion in this story and the way that it feels so deeply personal. You can tell this story was really important to her and I think that really came across. And so I really connected with it and had a great time reading it. I ended up giving this one 4.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I read was one of the ones that was on my list of favorites and that is As Long As The Lemon Trees Grow. This book is so fantastic. I've talked about it so many times at this point. If you want to see a little bit more of my in-depth thoughts on it you can go and watch my favorites video for the year so I won't talk about it too much here but it's a must read, fantastic, fantastic story that will break your heart, make you sob your eyes out and oh it's just it's so good. You have to read this book and of course I gave this 5 out of 5 stars and I was apparently having a really good reading month in February because I read back-to-back -back favorites because the next book I read was The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshni Chokshi. You all know, love this book so much. Talked about it in a lot more detail in my favorites video as well as several of my videos throughout this year. Absolutely just a new all-time favorite book for me and again another five-star read. Next up I read Almond. This is a book that I think I bought maybe two years ago or something but it had been sitting on my shelf for so long. I literally bought this because I saw RM from BTS reading it and I was like I need to read it because if he's reading it, I have to read it. So that was why I bought it in the first place and I finally got around to picking it up this year and I loved this. This was a fantastic book. It's about this boy who was born with this condition that prevents him from feeling emotions, like he doesn't truly understand emotions and he doesn't feel them the way that other people do. And it's a story about relationships and grief and our connections with each other and it was fantastic. I genuinely loved everything about this. It was suspenseful, it was mysterious, it was emotional and I'd highly highly recommend it. And I gave this one a 4.25 out of 5 stars. So the next 23 books that I read were all volumes of manga and those were volumes 11 through 33 of Yona of the Dawn. Again I talked about this in my favorites video because this was one of my favorite reads as well but yes I read 23 volumes of this this year, finally counted. I know that's a lot so that does make up a big chunk of the 65 or so books I read this year but I have no regrets. It was so fun. I love this series so much and they're just so good to binge read. I love manga for that and whenever I'm in the mood to read something but I don't feel like sitting down and reading like a novel or a nonfiction work or anything like that and I just want something to move through quickly, manga is always there for that. So yeah, had a great time with these five out of five stars to this whole series. The next book on my list was my first reread of the year and that was The Little Prince. This again is another one of my all-time favorite books. I've talked about it many many times, easily five stars. I just felt like I needed to go back to this story because it had been a while so I decided to pick it up again. One of my all-time favorite classics, just one of my all-time favorite books and will always recommend this one. Okay next up I read another fantasy duology and that is The Daughter of the Moon Goddess and The Heart of the Sun Warrior. These were an interesting experience for me. First of all, I honestly bought these because the covers were so pretty I just could not pass them up and I genuinely had a really good time with the first book. Yes, I had some problems with it. Yes, the love triangle is so annoying but it was still an overall captivating and interesting story. I liked the characters for the most part and I was really curious to see where it was gonna go. Honestly, I think you could read this as a standalone and it would be fine but I of course had to pick up the second book as well. I have deep regrets about this. <laughs> this one I ended up giving four stars. It was good, it was fun, I liked my time reading it. This, I think I gave 2.5 stars. Um, I did not like the choices that were made in this. <laughs> I honestly feel like this book was kind of unnecessary for the whole series. It didn't really add much. We kind of just backtracked and also went back and forth like a thousand times. I'm not even joking. The back and forth in this love triangle is so 
so crazy. It is giving YA uh, fantasy circa 2010. So there were still elements of it that I enjoyed, but overall I could not get over how irritating this love triangle was and how much like the main character, 100% girl is a Libra. She can't make a decision to save her life. It's so annoying. <laughs> My sister is here and she's laughing at the fact that I'm calling out Libras because she's a Libra. <laughs> but it's so unbelievably irritating um, and impossible to read at times. So yeah, unfortunately did not like this, but I did enjoy this one. So I may end up getting rid of this book eventually, but I think I'll keep this one, if only for the beautiful cover. <laughs> Next, I read Mysteries of Thorn Manor by Margaret Rogerson. This is the little novella companion story to Sorcery of Thorns, which was my favorite book I read last year. I did enjoy this, honestly, kind of unnecessary, kind of not memorable. You could have added this as like a little bonus chapter thing, just online or even to the back of like a new printing of the book or something. I don't think it really needed its own book. It was good. It just wasn't like mind blowing and I didn't have to read it. So I ended up giving this three out of five stars. Next up, I read one volume of Why Rayliana Ended Up at the Duke's Mansion. I only read this because I watched the first episode of the anime and I was like, this seems kind of fun. Like it seems kind of dumb, but it also seems a little bit fun. So I'm gonna try reading the manga. It's not very good, but if you want something just kind of like mindless and trashy, it's a fun fantasy romance time. I gave this three out of five stars. It's not like anything profound by any means. Like I said, it's the type of thing you read and turn your mind off for. But yeah, I wouldn't personally really recommend it. The next book that I read was none other than Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. I have already made a video on this, an in-depth video, so if you want my full spoilery thoughts you can go check it out there. But you all know I did not like this book. I genuinely do not understand the hype with it. I think it's so beyond mediocre when it comes to fantasy. It's just a ripoff of every other fantasy book you've ever read, done more poorly. It's not good. I really don't understand how this blew up the way that it did this year. I gave this two out of five stars. The next book that I read was the other book I read in the same video I read Fourth Wing, which was The Serpent and the Wings of Night. I finally got that title right. <laughs> this one I also didn't enjoy. I also don't think it's good at all. I gave it 2.5 out of 5 stars only because I think it's a little bit better than Fourth Wing, but only marginally. It's just not well written. The story makes no sense. The romance is really boring and again it just feels like a ripoff of other fantasy books you've read. So again, not sure where the hype is coming from. Next up I read The Adventures of Amina al-Sarafi. This book again beautiful cover. Honestly, why I purchased a copy of it. Unfortunately, I was really let down by this. I expected fantasy, pirates, a good swashbuckling time, and I got some of that. For the first half of the book, I was in love with this. I was sure it was going to be at least four stars, but potentially a five star book, which was great. But once we got to like the second half, the last third, basically, the book took an interesting turn, a tone shift, if you will, that I was not anticipating, which maybe I would have liked it more if I knew that the book was going to be like this. The book becomes kind of humorous and comedic rather than the serious tone it had at the beginning. It was still funny. There were still jokes being made, but at a certain point you start getting into talking bird people and I felt like I was reading an entirely different book from the book I was reading at the beginning. There was no cohesion in the story and it felt kind of patched together at times. So that was my problem with it. The first half, if we had kept that energy for the rest of the book, I would have been obsessed with this because the writing is really good. That's not the problem. And the characters were really interesting. It was just some of the choices that were made were not my thing. So other people might like it more, but it wasn't personally for me. So I ended up giving this 3.25 out of five stars. Next up, I read a popular book that I was very excited to read and that was Yellow Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. This was unfortunately another letdown and disappointment for me. I still liked it. I thought it was a decent book. I just don't think it's amazing or profound in the way that a lot of people say that it is. I've talked about this in previous videos too, but I think that this is a book for people who don't know anything about the publishing industry, who were not involved in the book community at all. You might learn some new information from this, but if you're in this space in any capacity, nothing about this is going to be all that profound to you. I talked about this a bit in my Goodreads review for it, but it felt like to me that this was more of the author responding to criticism that she's received rather than an actual insightful critique of racism in the publishing industry. So it felt to me like the author was just like talking to the audience through her characters rather than 
telling a story with the characters. So I didn't really love this and I ended up giving it three out of five stars. The next book that I read was Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. This again, I think I just had like a streak of disappointments, which was unfortunate. You know how much I love Margaret Rogerson because I love Sorcery of Thorns. That book is just one of my favorites of all time. But this one was not it. I honestly can't tell you what it's about. I read it maybe seven, six months ago or something. Can't remember exactly, but I should remember something about it. I don't remember anything anything at all. I can't tell you what happened because it was just that forgettable and uninteresting in my opinion. Didn't care about the characters, didn't care about the plot, didn't care about what was going on, which makes me really sad. I also wasn't that big of a fan of Enchantment of Ravens, Margaret Rogerson's first book when I first read that one. I feel like I might have to reread it to see if I like it more now, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe something about the story of Sorcery of Thorns just really stands out to me and her other work isn't really my thing. And so I gave this three out of five stars. Honestly, it's probably closer to 2.5, but I don't think it's a bad book. I just don't think it's for me. The next book that I read is one that almost made my list of favorites and that is Ripe by Sarah Rose Etter. I just have the dust jacket because I'm loaning the book to a friend right now. This is a literary fiction novel about this woman who works in tech living in the Bay Area and so much about this story was just so unbelievably real uh, that it was just jarring. It was kind of painful at times, uh, but it was fantastic and I absolutely loved it. I picked it up because it was blurbed by Carmen Maria Machado on the cover and she's one of my favorite authors, so I knew that I would probably like this and thankfully I really did. I'd highly recommend this to absolutely anybody who loves literary fiction and also anyone who lives in the Bay Area. So I ended up giving this 4.75 out of 5 stars. Next on my list was another one of my favorite reads of the year and that is A Study in Drowning by by Ava Reed. Talked about this a lot more in my favorites video, but just fantastic YA dark academia. If you are into dark fairy tales and folk tales, this book is absolutely for you. If you like stories about stories, you gotta read it. It's so, so good. Genuinely love everything Ava Reed writes. So again, five out of five stars. So we had a bunch of back-to-back -back bangers because my next read was another one of my favorites of the year, and that was The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. This book, you all know, talked about it so many times at this point. This is it when it comes to romance with fantasy. It's so, so good, so heartwarming. Again, you absolutely must read it. If you like witches, if you like found family, this is the book for you. Five out of five stars. The next book was, again, another favorite read of the year, which was Happy Place by Emily Henry. My absolute favorite Emily Henry book, the one that everyone should read, even though I think it's people's least favorite overall, and it shouldn't be. You're all wrong. This is the best one. Five out of five stars. So moving, so heartbreaking. I cried so much and deeply, deeply related. It's just so good. The next book that I read was Flower Heart. This was pitched as a book with Howl's Moving Castle vibes and Sorcery of Thorns vibes, and I totally understand how people would compare it to those two things. It is pretty similar. Unfortunately, the story just read a little too young for my taste sometimes, which is not inherently a bad thing in any way. I just personally didn't connect with it as much as I was hoping to, but it was still a cute story, and if you like either Howl's Moving Castle or Sorcery of Thorns, you'll probably enjoy elements of this as well. And I ended up giving this 3.25 out of five stars. The next book I read was Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. This book I've mentioned before was another one that was almost on my list of favorites because I really, really enjoyed this. But I think this book is perfect for fans of the Spiderwick Chronicles. This is like grown up Spiderwick and oh my God, I ate it up. It was so, so good. Perfect fantasy. Another book I would describe as cozy fantasy. Just such a fun time, such a good romance, an interesting plot and world and a main character that is so lovable and easy to root for. Absolutely love this book. And I gave it 4.25 out of five stars. The next book that I read was one of the only classics I ended up reading this year, and that was Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I loved this. It's absolutely become one of my new favorite classic novels, and it was perfect to read during October, which was when I read it, and I gave this one four out of five stars. My next read was another fantasy read, and that is Starling House by Alex E. Haro. I wanted to like this so much more than I did. I feel like I saw a lot of my favorite authors and other uh, reviewers talking about this book and really enjoying it, so I was really anticipating loving this one, but unfortunately this was kind of like flat for me. There's nothing glaringly wrong with it in my opinion. I just found it a little bit boring and I didn't really get invested in the characters or the plot or the story very much. So I ended up giving this three out of five stars. But if you like fantasy kind of gothic stories set in haunted houses, maybe you'd give this a try and see if you like it any more than I did. But again, really wanted to love this. Unfortunately, just don't think it was for me. Next up, I read another one of my favorites of the year, which I finally got a physical copy of. And that is of course, Woman Eating by Claire Coda. Again, talked about this book endlessly this year absolutely adored everything about it. A must read if you're into lit fic or if you're into vampires or both, which is the perfect combination, which is why this book is so good. 
five out of five stars, please read it. Next up, I read another fantasy series. This was really my year of getting back into fantasy series, basically going back to my roots, which is what I think I needed. So the next two books I read were Belladonna and Foxglove. Again, these were a cover buy for me just because I love the artwork on these UK editions so much. They're so pretty. I ended up really enjoying the story as well. They weren't mind-blowing or an absolute favorite by any means, but they were still good immersive fantasy. I feel similarly about these to the way that I feel about the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. They're good, they're interesting, the romance is interesting enough for me to keep reading, and I just like the world that we're in. I think this is solid YA, so if you're looking for a new fantasy series to get into, give these a try. The main character is basically in love with death, so if you like something a little bit darker and more intense, these might be for you. So yeah, I gave both of these four out of five stars. Okay, we're in the final few books now, and one of the last books I read this year was What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. I honestly picked this up because I'd read work from T. Kingfisher before, and I enjoyed it and I wanted to try something new. And also because I watched uh, The Fall of the House of Usher and I needed more of that story. And this is basically a retelling, reimagining of that story. And it was really enjoyable. It's very, very short, so you'll get through it really quickly. Um, but it was dark and disturbing and gruesome. And I read it in October, I believe. So it was the perfect time. And I had a great time with it. And I gave this one 3.25 out of five stars. All right. And then lastly, I read my favorite reads of the year, which is such a great way to end the year. And that started with The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins, which I read twice this year. And technically, this was the very last book I read because I read the next three books in between my first and second reread of this. You all know what this did to me this year. I talked about it in my favorites video. I made an entire dedicated video analyzing this book, comparing it to the movie. So yeah, uh, changed my life, reignited my Hunger Games obsession. And so of course, the final books that I read in 2023 were the Hunger Games trilogy. Reread these for the first time since I was like 14 years old. And my God, was it life-changing. My absolute favorite books I read this year, I can't stop thinking about them. I literally plan to read them again. I've been putting off reading other things because all I can think about is reading these again. <laughs> five out of five stars all around. The greatest, the best. They're untouchable. But there you all have it. That is it for my list of every single book I read in 2023. Let me know in the comments down below what some of your favorite and least favorite books that you read in 2023 were and also your biggest disappointment and biggest surprise. I'm really curious to know. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always. Thank you all for watching this video. Thank you all for spending this year with me and I hope you all have a fantastic new year and I will see you very very soon in 2024. Bye!